Hello, I'm John Dixon. I'm an independent medical writer and trainer in scientific writing at Libra Medical Marketing. Uh, I'd like to thank Peter Llewellyn for the opportunity to be here today. As a medical writer, I've experienced both the good and the challenging aspects of advisory boards. So today I'd like to provide a medical writer's perspective of advisory boards. And most of these uh, views are my own personal views. I hope this will be of interest to medical writers early in their career uh, who perhaps have never attended an advisory board or, or, or feel as if they're just about to be plunged in at the deep end or indeed for uh, people who are intending becoming medical writers and who want to know what we get up to. By the way, this is a diving board, not an advisory board. So an advisory board consists of experts uh, in fields of medicine or medical science. Uh, they're usually practicing physicians or surgeons, nurses, GPs, uh, or specialists involved in diagnosis and investigation or other uh, areas of medicine such as radiologists, microbiologists, and epidemiologists. Uh, they're active clinical researchers, they'll be well known in their fields and indeed leaders in their field. Uh, they regularly attend uh, and speak at congresses. Uh, they're also known as key opinion leaders uh, or KOLs. The purpose of an advisory board, uh, as stated in guidance provided by the Prescription Medicines Code of Practice Authority, uh, is an opportunity for companies to acquire advice on subjects relevant to their products, to answer legitimate business questions to which the company doesn't already know the answer. And of the many ways in which pharma companies engage with healthcare physicians, advisory boards are arguably uh, one of the most valuable types of interaction. So who attends an advisory board meeting? Well, the experts. Uh, there'll also be pharma company representatives, uh, one or possibly more. Uh, if you're working uh, as a medical writer with an agency, there may be an agency representative, uh, perhaps somebody who's looking after logistics or even one of your colleagues who's uh, going to be Carol uh, chairing the, the meeting or facilitating the meeting. And of course, uh, you'll be there as well. Usually around about six or, or 12 uh, experts uh, would probably be invited. The scope of subject matter uh, discussed at advisory boards is, is wide. Um, it can be about a product anywhere along the life cycle from initial uh, research uh, uh, and development right the way through to post-marketing surveillance. Um, the board may uh, address a challenging publication that's come out or adverse events that the company wants to uh, try to decide how to, how to uh, manage these. Uh, it may be planning educational programs or communication both to um, uh, peers or to the public. Um, it may be a meeting to help the company decide which way to go. Uh, it's strategy in terms of development of new products or new medications. Uh, it may be to develop some sort of consensus statement uh, or to address regional challenges. Uh, the marketing and, and provision of drugs in the United States, for instance, is going to be very different from Southeast Asia. Whatever the subject matter, the pharmaceutical company should comply with a code of practice with regard to purpose, venue, uh, scope of activities and reimbursement uh, of the experts. Uh, in the UK, uh, this code is the Association of British Pharmaceutical Industry Code of Practice. Uh, advice is also uh, provided on the Prescription Medicines Code of Practice Authority website. Um, other regions such as the US and the EU have similar codes uh, that should be followed. So what does the medical writer do? Well, uh, he or she may be working either for an agency or independently, um, and your role may be just to write up a report, although let's not underestimate what's involved in providing a good meeting report. Um, with a little more experience, you may be involved in uh, selecting and inviting experts. You may be involved in preparing meeting resources, such as the agenda or slide, uh, slide decks. Um, you may be involved in deciding the outputs of the meeting, whether it's going to be a, a publication or whether it's going to be a, a, a manuscript or, or, do, or other document or perhaps it's just going to be a, a, a presentation or a position statement. You may be involved yourself in facilitating the meeting uh, and I certainly have been involved both as a medical writer and as a facilitator and of course there you have the, the interesting challenge of multitasking. Uh, and you may be involved not just in writing up a report, but obviously following this up by uh, preparing, drafting and, and submitting a publication. But whatever your role is, it's really important to communicate effectively with everyone. Preparation is, is key. It's 
critical. You need to be sure about the meeting objectives. You need to be able to uh, be familiar with the agenda, to establish exactly what outputs are required from you in terms of perhaps just a transcript or is it a report, which is a synthesis of, of, of key points in the meeting, a manuscript or a publication strategy. And also your deadlines, and it may be you're expected both to provide an almost immediate uh, summary of uh, the meeting, uh, perhaps after 48 hours, and then followed up by a draft uh, over the coming uh, week to 10 days, whatever. You need to know who's who. Uh, it's well worthwhile doing your research, working out, uh, getting to know who the experts are, what their specialities are, what their specific interests and research areas are. Um, perhaps try to find out who the pharma company representatives are. Um, know who's going to be the facilitator or the chairperson uh, and be certain about your own particular role. You need to access any resources that are relevant to the meeting. There will almost always be key papers that you'll want to read if you're not already be, uh, familiar with them. Um, slide decks, often uh, at advisory boards, uh, the, the experts will pr present uh, some uh, material or research uh, and it's really worthwhile knowing exactly what the, uh, the content of those paper these uh, decks are beforehand. Uh, and if there are any previous reports, if this is a second or third meeting on the same topic, then access the, the reports of the previous meetings if you can, uh, just to get a real feel as to what sort of things are likely to be discussed. Get up to speed. Um, you need to read the resources. Um, if you don't know much about the subject, it's really uh, useful to do a, a literature review. Find a good review. Um, particularly, uh, become familiar with uh, acronyms and abbreviations and jargon. It doesn't take many abbreviations or acronyms to throw you when you're trying to work out exactly what's happening in a highly technical conversation. And I will admit that if I don't know much about a subject, I'll go to Wikipedia, um, briefly read up on the subject, and then move on to the, the academic literature after that. Personal stuff. Know what you should be wearing, what you're expected to wear. Um, agree your fee, and that can be difficult. Uh, you, to set your fee, you need to know exactly what's involved and how long it's going to take you. And plan your schedule so that you can actually comfortably deliver uh, what your client expects you to deliver. You need to take some equipment with you. Uh, it may be that at the meeting the recording's already been uh, arranged for you, but if not, you uh, need to take your own audio recorder, uh, I find it useful to have a timer, uh, certainly a slide handout uh, for all the, the, uh, the, the slide decks that are going to be presented so that you can write notes opposite each slide and put timestamps on so that you know exactly where you are uh, in each part of the, the meeting and you can go back to the audio if you need to. Um, I think it's useful if you don't know any of the experts to have a photo gallery so that you can actually familiarise yourself with the appearance of the people that you're going to meet and that makes it much easier to work out who says what at what time. And other little things like, you know, have adapters if you're going abroad, have an extension lead. Logistics, yes, um, you need to know uh, how you're going to get there and that you're going to arrive in time. I think it's really important to visit the meeting room in advance. Um, there are times when I've gone to a meeting room and actually wound up having to um, readjust the position of tables and chairs to actually what the client intended in the first place. Um, it's good to have uh, nameplates arranged and uh, you need to know exactly what audio has been provided, where it's being provided, where the microphones are. And it's important that you sit in an appropriate place. Because at the meeting, um, here's a, a diagram of a typical uh, horseshoe shape. Uh, the chair of the meeting will probably be at the top of the horseshoe. Uh, sometimes this is a, a large round table, uh, sometimes it's a, a square of tables. But it's where you sit that matters. Um, if you sit far away from the chair and you have somebody who perhaps is particularly softly spoken, uh, people will tend to address the speaker and it may be that you actually find it slightly difficult to pick up what's being said. So better to sit, uh, well, as near to the chair as possible so that you pick up all the sound, you can hear exactly what's going on and you can also exchange views with the chair so you can perhaps clarify things like abbreviations or, or, or perhaps ask for something to be uh, repeated or even suggest something that could be discussed. At the meeting, um, there will always be unexpected participants. It's useful to get their names and their job titles uh, so that you can put those on the report when you're writing it up. Be sure your audio is working. Use timestamps so, you know, uh, so that you know at what time you, you are in, in a particular part of the meeting. And I think the most difficult skill of all is to decide whether you're going to write or you're going to listen. Ideally, uh, 
the best thing to do is to get a really good set of handwritten notes and, and writing up a report is, is relatively easy after that. But there will be times when there's highly technical discussion that you're not sure what's going on and I find personally I have to put my pen down and I have to listen. Uh, I think it's probably more worthwhile to really understand what's going on and then go back to your audio later and listen to the uh, discussion again and then transcribe it. Of course that is time consuming so it's this balance between writing and listening which you need to get right for you. When you can, try and clarify any jargon or acronyms or, or difficult parts of discussion, but you can't keep on interrupting the discussion, uh, and that's what your audio backup's for. Uh, and I'll repeat this again. Confirm what your client actually wants at the end of the meeting when, because sometimes you find that, that the shape of a report uh, that you're expected to provide at the, the beginning is, is, is sometimes modified when uh, your client may say, actually, we need, we need something uh, to focus on something particularly within the meeting or, or to reshape the report. Uh, in a particular way. After the meeting, it's quite an intense and tiring day, possibly even day and a half, so you may need to sleep before you get to work. Uh, and armed, hopefully, with a good idea of what your client wants, um, you're going to prepare, you're going to share, you're going to revise your document, and then you're going to proofread it. Audio quality is important. Um, personally, I use a Zoom recorder and I use what's called Express Scribe software and a foot pedal, uh, which gives great quality of recording and real ease of audio playback so that you can focus in on particular conversations or difficult parts of discussion. There's no standard report format. Um, but it may be that your client uh, has a, re a report format that they want you to use. Um, but otherwise, the, the principles of a good report probably be uh, certainly focusing on, uh, centre on the objectives of the meeting, uh, to highlight the unmet need or knowledge gaps which have been established, uh, to bring together, to synthesise, summarise key insights and to provide future direction. But whatever, it needs to be a readable and well-structured document because people are going to want to come back to it and dip in and out of it. What not to do? Uh, well, a nice quote from the Ascatel 2016. Uh, what you don't want to produce is a transcript the size and weight of a concrete slab full of rambling conversations. But a well-planned meeting may well plan your report. So again, a similar quote, a quote from the similar workers. Uh, Let your meeting plan write your report. If you've done your planning well, the transcript should flow beautifully from one item to the next. So what are the challenges? Well, there's a perceived challenge of working with medical experts. I, I, I've never found a problem working with medical experts. I've found them to be approachable, interesting people who want to share their knowledge and explain. Uh, and it's always been a, a, a really great experience to work with, uh, with the experts. Other things like meeting uh, room layout and audio quality, which needs to be right. Um, understanding the language of, of non-native speakers. If, if, if the meeting is in language which is different from yours, uh, there can be sometimes language problems which is difficult to quite understand uh, what people are saying. Um, understanding technical discussion uh, can be difficult. Uh, and then there's this balance between writing and listening and then transcribing. Identifying who said what. Uh, your client may want, not want to know who said what, but uh, sometimes they really do want to know who had what opinion. Uh, and so it can be sometimes quite challenging to, to make sure that you get the right person ascribed to the right, um, the, 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 the right quote. Um, you may be multitasking during the reading if you're not just writing but facilitating as well. Uh, and then again, clarifying the report format. You need to be really clear about the output. So what are the, the cons, the downsides of advisory boards? Well, if you don't manage to challenge, to confront uh, the, the aforementioned challenges, then, then you, it may be difficult. Um, certainly being fully prepared uh, can be difficult if you're asked to uh, attend a board last minute or the subject matter is completely new to you. And then there's the time to generate outputs, which um, particularly if you've got to transcribe audio, which can be really quite time consuming. So it's a demanding and time consuming challenge that requires careful preparation. But you're working at the forefront of biomedical science. Um, you have the privilege of meeting and working with medical experts. Um, it's an opportunity sometimes to travel outside your own country. And certainly it gets even better uh, when you know the experts and you're familiar with the subject matter. So I'd say it's an, an exciting and enjoyable challenge from which you can learn a lot. And I'd recommend getting involved with advisory boards. Um, if you want to read further beyond uh, this presentation, then there's a bibliography of some useful resources there. Um, but thank you for listening. <laughs>